Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We have little Austin over here on the other side. Say good morning, Austin. Good morning. All right. Well, we thank God for another day and, and another opportunity to share in his word. Uh, I'm Dr. Arthur D. Kemp. This is my wife, Gina. Hello. Our grandson, Austin, is here with us. And... Um, we just we're just blessed to be here in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and and want to share a word with you from the Enlightened Word, the Enlightened Word Ministries, and uh, we thank God for for this uh, for this opportunity. On last uh, week, we read from Second Timothy one and seven. Pray first. Yeah, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. We're definitely gonna pray. But from last week, we, we read uh, from uh, the text, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And, and we've been studying uh, on the subject, the spirit of fear. Yes. So that's uh, what we're going to continue with on today. I don't know how many uh, episodes or segments this teaching is going to Involved, but um, um, as many as it takes for us to do it, that's what we'll do. So before we get started uh, with our teaching on on today, we're going to uh, lay it in in prayer by my wife Gina. I'm gonna let her pray. Prayer is on our heart, so we're going to uh, send the invitation to her to do so. All right, sister, sister Gina, go right ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we yes. thank you for yes, this opportunity to come before you yes, to praise and magnify your holy name. Mm -hmm. We thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. Yes, Lord. We thank you for all things you've blessed us with. We thank you for this time to come and uh, hear what our, our hearts are going to be um, Mm -hmm. be feasting on our our, mm -hmm. our minds are going to be feasting on the yes. word that you have for us yes, on Lord. this morning mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for the presence of uh, we thank you for your presence we thank you for the presence of mm -hmm. our grandson austin mm -hmm. for us lord jesus lord we thank you for all things for our we ask you just to continue to bless our families yes, our lord. sons thank our you, grandchildren yes. our parents that they will be able to continue mm -hmm. to live the life that you have given them to the fullness that yes, that that is theirs to uh to to have, Lord, we thank you for again just uh, blessing us to be alive and this and to be able to um, welcome your Holy Spirit mm -hmm. at this time in in your presence. Well, Lord, we forever give your name the glory, mm -hmm. the honor yes, Lord, that Jesus. you so deserve. In Jesus' yes. name, we pray. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen and amen. amen. And amen. Thank you, Sister Gina, for that beautiful word of prayer. Uh, why don't we begin by your reading for us again, uh, the text that we've been focusing in on. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. verse, verse seven. Verse seven. Uh -huh. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of power and of love. And of a sound mind. Yes, yes. And so we've been focusing, as I said, on the, the spirit of fear and getting an understanding of what that uh, is about. What we're, What is it talking about, the spirit of fear? If you go back and look at our video from last week, mm -hmm. we explained about the word spirit and began to go into uh, the word fear and, and what that was. And today, let me begin by talking a little bit about some of the background into okay. um why Paul needed to, or felt the need to write this okay. uh, script to, to Brother Timothy. Um, and from, from my study, and I, I found that when you look at this time period, uh, the, uh, the, the emperor during that time was uh, Nero, and he was in charge of, uh, of, of Rome, and, and it was also during the time near the death of Paul, this when this letter okay. was written, right. um, Nero was the emperor from AD 54 to 68. Paul died somewhere around 
AD 64. So that places this letter around 63, 64. Uh, and this was some 30 years mm -hmm. after the de death, burial, resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. So um, uh, this is this is during that. This is the time period that we're talking about here. At this time, Timothy was the pastor at Ephesus. And um, one of the things I wanted to know was, well, why would he, why would Paul write such a letter to Timothy telling him about the spirit, talking, talking to him about the spirit of fear that, and telling him, and, 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 and most say he was encouraging him mm -hmm. to let him know that it wasn't God that gave you this, as we said last week, right. this spirit of fear, but he gave him other qualities that he would be able to use as a pastor in the church in Ephesus. But why would he even address Timothy in such a way mm -hmm. regarding a spirit of fear? Now, I, I heard one, one pastor uh, one, or one theologian uh, wrote uh, or I read where one theologian wrote, well, um, Timothy didn't, didn't have a, a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. and, and he used the word uh, t timidity, which I talked about last week. He's, he said, Timothy wasn't timid. No way. I mean, his whole character, his whole nature, his disposition, and he was he was a brave man. And, and in fact, um, Paul relied upon him. And when he needed somebody to come, he would send for Timothy. Mm -hmm. Timothy would show up. Mm -hmm. So how was it that, how could Timothy have been timid? There's no way that Timothy was timid. That's what, that's what this, uh, this theologian said, isn't it? So it, it's not true that he was Tim. He was just he was just putting that out there, but what he was saying that he had, he was a man of power and mm -hmm. of love and mm -hmm. a sound man. Mm -hmm. And I, I, here's my question: If Timothy didn't have timidity or didn't have fear, why would Paul even write that? Right. What right. sense does it make to say to a man, "God didn't give you"? This particular spirit, mm -hmm. that spirit came from somewhere else. Why would it? Why would he even write? Why would a mentor? Why would an elder write that to a younger uh, preacher? Write that and include that if he wasn't dealing with some mm -hmm. of that. Right. He, would, I believe he was dealing with it, and here's the reasons why I believe he was dealing with it. If you look at um, some of the other theologians and what they've written, and historians and what they said was going on during this time. And when you read the scripture, what was going on during this time, Lawson, was that in Ephesus, Paul, uh, Timothy had to deal with certain elements mm -hmm. okay. that were potentially fearful and caused pressure on this man. All right, talk to us. One of them was he had to deal with some false teachers mm. because there were teachers in Ephesus that was teaching uh, messages that was teaching a theology that was in opposition to the theology of Jesus Christ, to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Yes, they were false teachers. So Paul, so 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 Paul's letter to Timothy mm -hmm. was an encouragement to help Timothy to understand and appreciate the fact that he was going to have to deal mm -hmm. with some people that were going to be doing some false teaching and trying to persuade the people of God mm -hmm. to go a different direction than the way Paul and, 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 and those who were in tune with the teaching, the ministry of Jesus Christ were, and, and that they, they would be, they would be persuaded to move in a different direction because of these false teachings. And so Timothy had to deal with that. He had to, he had to combat that. And you had some shrewd, mm -hmm. uh, uh, unscrupulous sales people, salesmen, <laughs> if you will, that was trying to grab the attention mm -hmm. and the minds and the hearts and the mentation, the emotions of the people of God and stir them away just like you have it today. Mm -hmm. So Paul was trying to get Timothy ready so he wouldn't be blindsided 
by those things that he was going to encounter? Well, he was already encountering okay. them because he was in he was already pastoring mm -hmm. and, and these things was already going on right. in his midst. And so um yes, preparing him for the future of these, but also dealing with the present Presence. condition mm -hmm. that Timothy was was uh, uh embarking on and that he was dealing with and that he was that he had to handle. Mm -hmm. He was in a crisis pressure uh, cooking situation right then and there. Mm -hmm. And so he needed a word right. of encouragement to assist him and support him in the, the, uh, in the work that he was doing because these false teachers were there right then. Another thing that was going on that, that Timothy had to deal with in Ephesus was okay. that there were, um, uh, there were there were there were women mm -hmm. that wanted to have wanted to have their say, and they wanted to uh, um, put forth their perspective, okay. their ideals. This is how things should be, and and uh, and during that in that culture, the men were the ones that were in charge and that were leaders and that was ones that said set things in uh, in in order, but women. There were, hey, they were speaking out mm -hmm. and wanted to be in charge, and they wanted to have some positions. And so Timothy had to deal with uh, the desire of certain women in the church who wanted to who wanted to be able to have positions over men mm -hmm. and tell the men what to do and set things in order for the men and. And so there was some struggle between the men and who? The women. And the women. They were they were there was some contention and there was struggle. And of course, Timothy didn't want to offend people. He didn't want to you don't want to run away to women. You don't want to offend the women. You don't want to do that. You don't you don't want and you don't want the women to run away uh, uh, turn people away. And, right. and so there was conflict. There was conflict. Um and there's and this and there's conflict today still. Mm -hmm. Men, women, men, women in churches, um, and so Timothy had to deal with that, and um, that was another thing. Um, godly leaders, godly leaders were hard to find; they were difficult to find, mm -hmm. and so uh, so who 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 was Timothy going to look? To look toward who who is who who is his aid who mm -hmm. is his help who mm -hmm. so, so I bet you Timothy as a pastor found himself feeling alone mm -hmm. many times mm -hmm. and having to turn to the Lord and and turn to his mentor to try to seek advice about well, what should I do and so that's that's what so that would cause some timidity um. I mentioned at the top of of this a day of this uh, teaching today about the Emperor Nero, mm -hmm. uh, a, uh, a theologian by the by the name of uh, Rick Rainier. He's he wrote um, about uh, Timothy's awareness of the actions of Nero. Nero was a tyrant. He was a bad. Mm -hmm. He was a bad man. He was Nero was. Uh, he, he was a guy that he, he killed many of his family members. He killed people that didn't agree with him, that mm. looked at him wrong. Some mm -hmm. said that he he was subject to kill people. Uh, he he uh, had he and he did all kinds of oh, terrible things to people. How he killed them, put the lions on them, mm. and he blamed uh, the the fire of, of Rome mm -hmm. on Christians. That's what they said he did. Is that now? Now the, some historians say that that Nero was was the cause of Rome burning, and he wanted to build his a special temple to himself. Mm -hmm. And but Nero went before the, the Senate and told them, "Let me tell you what happened." Because he's because they sent him to him, "Hey, the people are blaming you, Nero." Nero said, let me tell you what happened. Let me use this as an opportunity to teach you what happened. What happened was them Christians <laughs> who believed it in this in this man that he was a, they said that he was a criminal that had come back to life and told folk, 
folk to drink his blood <laughs> and to eat his flesh. And, uh, and that was some 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 kind of teaching there. Mm -hmm. And so these Christians around here now um is around here symbolizing eating his flesh and drinking his blood and killing our little children and mm. drinking our children's blood. Mm. <laughs> Nero told him that and he said, so it was them Christians. That's what that's who did. That's who burned down Rome and used that uh to then begin to feed the Christians to the lions. What? Yep. Yeah. That's so terrible. Timothy knew about this. And Timothy's like, I don't want to get fed by no lions. <laughs> I don't want to get fed to the lions. Don't no, I don't want to get fed to the lions. And I mean he was killing and killing his wife, killing his mama. They were doing that man was something else. Mm -hmm. He was a tyrant. He did some other some other devious stuff too. He was I mean, he was the, he was a sexual pervert too, so he was he was a terrible he was a terrible person. So Timothy had had some uh, basis mm -hmm. for the fear that he had. But let's look at this a little bit more. Let's let's understand more about this fear, this word fear here uh, in the scripture. So we talked about uh, the we talked about fear and. Uh, the, the spirit of fear, but let me just go in a little bit more detail about fear, and because I used the words last week, fear, and I used the word anxiety. Okay, I didn't make a distinction between the two, but there is some distinction that's made by scholars uh, between the words fear and anxiety. Now, fear is considered an emotional reaction to something that is known or something that is seen and fear an emotional reaction something that is known you've heard uh, that Nero kills people mm -hmm. or you've seen uh, his henchmen killing and slaying folks right. or you've heard about it and, it, and you, you so you know about it and what this, what fear will typically trigger is what we call a flight response. Mm -hmm. So when fear comes up, mm -hmm. people want to do what? Run away. They want to run. Mm -hmm. Because that thing is scary. Mm -hmm. Let me get out of here. All right. Anxiety, on the other hand, is a physiological reaction, according to, the, to, 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 to scholars, to something that is unseen or unknown. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is a physiological reaction to something that I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's about to happen. I don't know what happened over there. And it tends to trigger a fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. Now, in other words, a uh, fight response would be I'm going I'm to I'm battle this thing. Mm -hmm. I can't see it. I don't know where it is, but I'm going to throw something. I'm going to throw something at it. I'm going to pick something up and get ready. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get me a stick. I'm, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going to try to come this way. But I'm, I'm going to be ready. Anxiety, fight, or flight. I'm going to be ready to run. It prepares the body to be able to do either. But that fear, when fear, this kind of fear that we're talking about here in in first uh what we, Second in, Timothy. in Second Timothy, mm -hmm. here in Second Timothy, one and and seven, mm -hmm. that's that's not a good type of fear. It's not a type of fear that prepares you mm -hmm. to fight. It's not that word, the Greek word that we use here. It's a negative thing. It's a crippling, handicapping type of fear that would cause you to either succumb to whatever's going on, or to run away with it, or or or, or to abandon your mission. Okay. And so, and so, uh, Paul is writing an encouraging message to Timothy here. Man, don't you can't abandon your mission. Mm -hmm. You got a calling on your life, mm -hmm. and you got to stay the course, and you got to remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the words. Of, you're gonna have to stay put and be the pastor that God is calling for. In as we would say today, in this 
evil. Lasting evil days. Last, right. In these lasting evil days. You want to yeah. say something, Sister? Mm -hmm. No, I was just thinking as you were talking about um, fear and anxiety. And I know sometimes uh, around this house that we live in now, uh, Dr. Kemp always uh, is watchful of things changing and things that out of the ordinary. And I know uh, the warm season's coming. And I know that there are little creatures that are out there crawling. And I get a little uh, anxiety because I... Uh, I don't like to see little snakes crawling around. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if I'm out walking, I'll uh, pick up something so I can fight them if I happen to see one. Yeah. And I also wear my boots. Oh, yeah. Just in case they want to crawl around my feet. Oh, <laughs> you wear, <laughs> yeah, wear your boots. But I tell you, God is good and... Mm -hmm. If we trust him and depend upon him, and that doesn't mean just be careless and just go out and, you know, mm -hmm. go for me, go out and just walk around, not barefooted, barefooted and not, not taking on, the not right where precautions. We live. So just be mindful of um, that God has given you the and common sense. Common sense. Oh, yes. Common sense. Not to just put yourself in. In harm's way. Dangerous situation. So you have to. Potentially you know, dangerous situation. Be aware of it, yes. Because you're right. As it's getting warmer, the weather's getting nicer. And um, and we're starting to move toward the springtime. Spring, yes. When the animals will be starting to come out from under the ground. Right now, the snakes are still under the ground because we have some cool days. Mm -hmm. um, but snakes will be coming out from under the ground. And they'll be crawling on the ground. And they'll be looking for sun. They'll be looking mm -hmm. to, to warm up. And. And so um, I thank God for having sensitivity to, to nature right. and changes in nature. Right. I uh, have, uh, um, God gave me ability to, to be able to sense mm -hmm. you know, changes in the environment. Um, it changes even in smells. I could see things that weren't there the day before. And so those are all gifts mm -hmm. from God to help us to, to protect ourselves oh, yes. so that we don't have to yes. live. Right. Day to day with the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but that we can um, know that we have power, love, and sound mm -hmm. mind to be able to operate mm -hmm. in, with what God has given us for a long time, for many years. Mm -hmm. God has blessed us with this, uh, with this beautiful home and property that it's on, and so we're we're grateful mm -hmm. to the Lord, and we're gonna we're gonna give Him praise, glory, and honor, and we're gonna be. Uh, watchful, vigilant right. as we as we live here. But we and, just thank the Lord for the mind again that He's mm -hmm. given us the right mind. Yeah. Because we know that there are as we were talking last week uh, about uh, you know being fearful and mm -hmm. um, not being uh, careful about not being careless and be, you know being careless mm -hmm. and i was just thinking about there are some people who are just afraid to go outside oh yes afraid to yes agoraphobia afraid of bugs afraid of mm -hmm. spiders afraid of just sometimes small phobias sometimes arachnophobia yeah sometimes things that we think oh you know what's wrong with that you know just get over it mm -hmm. and it's it's real for a lot of it's people real. It's, it's real it's real for a lot but of people. you know when we have the mind like the mind of christ we know mm -hmm. that he will protect us mm -hmm. he will guide us mm -hmm. and he will lead us yes indeed and he will shelter us yes indeed yes he will um, so this is what we're talking about. What, what you're what you're saying is having the having the right mind, mm -hmm. uh, the mind of Christ, the mind of the Anointed One and His anointing, right. so that we don't have to live with this spirit that God did not right. give us a spirit of fear. fear. So let's talk more about this spirit of fear. We go to the next word <clears throat> that relates. We said last week that uh, the word fear which also relates to anxiety, pressure, stress. Um, and you can go back and look at the definition of it. It has, has uh, three words that are associated mm -hmm. with it. This word fear in the scripture, um, it deals with 
timidity, we talked about that, which was a lack of uh, confidence or a lack mm -hmm. of confidence right. in oneself, self-confidence. Now, let me explain a little bit more about the, the self-confidence part. We need to understand that any confidence that we have need to be confidence in Jesus Christ. Right. That it is God that worketh in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. So the confidence that we have is not our own confidence. It's not the confidence that belongs to us. We might say self-confidence. We might use the word self-confidence. But it's actually a confidence of Jesus Christ working in us to do what it is that we need to get done. Mm -hmm. So because God is working in us to will and to do of his good pleasure, then we can then rely upon that confidence that is within us to carry out the task that we need to carry out both in our own homes and our own lives and our jobs, wherever it is. So the confidence, the self-confidence of the Christian is not a individually owned personal confidence, but it is reliance mm -hmm. upon the master with dominion, power of authority, the Lord, right. who is working in us to carry out the task for his glory. Mm -hmm. So I just want to clarify that and get that straight now. Get that because this because uh, um, the, the that the self confidence or lack of self confidence is not reliance upon ourselves. Man, we had to rely upon ourselves. <laughs> we be we couldn't we couldn't do it. You can't do it on your own. You must have God working in you to accomplish. Even if you're not saved, right? If it, it takes God to regulate situations and circumstances in life for things to come out in a righteous way, in a good way. Otherwise, you, things will be all in turmoil. Right. Do let the devil take control and he in charge of things. It's going to wreck some, it's going to wreck somebody's life. So, um, so, but this timidity says, I can't do that. In other words, you don't have Christ working in you to carry it out, to help you to endure situations and circumstances in life. And therefore, you're not sure whether you can carry out the task or not that you've been asked to carry out. You're not certain whether or not you'll be able to. That's anxiety. Mm -hmm. Not certain whether you're going to be able to accomplish the job. So a lack of confidence or lack of confidence in um, God working in you to carry it out. Some call it what? self confidence. In other words, it's the, I can't do that. So it keeps people from doing things such mm -hmm. as going to school. Right. Yeah. Well, why don't you go to college? Well, I can't, I can't do, well, why don't you be a mathematician? I can't do the math. Mm -hmm. Why don't you be an engineer? I can't do the, the, the engineering. Well, why don't you be a, a, a doctor? I can't do medicine. Well, why don't you be a psychologist? I can't understand people. I can't do this and I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. The next one is, the next word that's associated and tied into this word fear is reticence. Reticence. Mm -hmm. The word reticence has to do with being restrained. Um, it's an inclination to keep one's thoughts, feelings, and personal affairs to oneself. Mm -hmm. In other words, Gina is saying, I ain't going to tell you what I'm thinking because if I tell you what I'm thinking, it makes me vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I'm not tell I'm not going to tell you how I feel because if I tell you how I feel, you might laugh at me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not going to tell you how, how my day went. I'm not going to mm -hmm. tell you what happened because you might, you might poke fun at me. You might pick at me. You might, you might, you might judge me. Mm -hmm. You might judge me. What? Judge it. You might evaluate me and determine that I am beneath you, mm -hmm. beneath you, mm -hmm. beneath your expectation. You might, you might determine, conclude that if you found out what I did today, how I did today, or what, what went on in my life today, that you would determine mm -hmm. that my day wasn't good enough for you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, rather than sharing my day with you, rather than sharing events in my life with you, rather than sharing myself with you, I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to hold my affairs. I ain't going to let you know nothing. And so reticence, uh, reticence says, I'm holding myself back. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's saying, 
I ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put myself out there. I'm not going to put myself out there. So you tell me, you say, go to school. Go learn. Mm -hmm. go, go get some skill. I ain't going. Mm -hmm. I ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to stay right where I'm safe. Right. I think that's, that's you hit the nail on the head when you said safe. Mm -hmm. They feel that that's the safe where a person would feel that they're, they're you know, keeping themselves safe mm -hmm. from any type of uh, ridicule, mm -hmm. any type of negative, uh, negative feelings Feed, mm -hmm. or ne negative feedback. feedback. Mm -hmm. So they, they keep themselves guarded. Mm -hmm. Guarded. Hey, it's that's like, a great hey, word. Uh, um, no, he's not going to, they're not going to know what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking is my thoughts mm -hmm. and it's going to stay with me. Going to stay with me. I'm not going to put it out there. If I put it, because if I put it out there, I may not like right. their response to it. And it's not, it don't say, I don't care what y'all think. It's not that no, one. Hell no. Mm -mm. I don't care what y'all do. No. Now, I, now, you've heard me, you've heard what I've said sometimes. People can do what they want to do. Right. That's their thing. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to do what the Lord instructs me to do. I'm going to carry out what God told me to carry out, regardless of what anybody said, regardless of what that person said, mm -hmm. whatever. That, you, because look, it's like this. I, I, looked at, I looked at my parents. My daddy did his thing. Mm -hmm. My daddy did, went to school, did, became a teacher, became an industrial arts person, an electronics person, had his own business. He still has his own business. He's an entrepreneur. He did his own thing. He didn't need me to tell him what to do. My mama did her thing. She was social work, did, uh, did social work, social service work for years and years and years, retired, got her money, her pension. She didn't need me to tell her what to do. Mm -mm. So... Do I, as an adult, need folk to try to tell me and direct my life? No, all I need for directing my life is the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit tells me what to do. He tells you what to do. Mm -hmm. And we work together. We talk about these things because um, we're, we don't hold back. We share with each other. Mm -hmm. We thank God for people who did not hold back, did not. Yes. Let things restrain them because if you stop, like your parents, like parents, parents. Tell, how about your parents? Okay, what about I mean, your parents, your parents, yeah, yeah, your father, what did he do? He worked, he worked, he didn't he hold worked. back. No, he worked hard, he was a hard worker. Mm -hmm. He went out and took care of his family, uh, because he knew that he was, uh, he was the man that was responsible for taking care of his family. Right. And so him, along with my mom, worked side by side. That's it. Worked early when they were like first got married and had one child out there. I mean, while I'm talking about hard workers, I'm talking about like chopping, chopping weeds from around, uh, out in the fields, the cotton, uh, picking corn, uh, shucking corn, uh, just um, taking care of the family the right. way that um, you know the way that they needed needed to do, needed to do, and we just you know we thank God for them um, right. knowing that there was a need and they didn't not, hold back right not letting uh, people say oh you know you all can't do this or you all can't do that right. knowing that they had as um, long as they had the health and the strength to yeah. go out and get it done right the Lord is going to um, let and them. Allow them to go out to go and do it. Did he bless them for that? Oh, yes. For not holding back? Because oh, yes. you—that's what you was talking about. Yes. You, you thank God for for blessing us with, uh, with parents, parents who didn't hold back right. in life. Right. Who didn't talk negative about you can't there do you that. Go. You can't do there that. There you go. They just uh, encouraged us. They just you know uh, took you know exposed us to those to things that uh, we needed to that environment. Right. So we could progress in life. Mm -hmm. I've even heard your father say that the reason that he moved his family from that small town in Ullen, Illinois, yes, so that we would up have, to the big city, the big city of Carbondale, Carbondale, so that we would have opportunities. Opportunities. And I thank the Lord for that. Um, him not being timid and yes. not have not being reticent. Fearful. Of what people were saying, they were like, "You go to Carbondale. That's yeah. a big city." Oh, 
and you know they some people i guess uh they had heard about different um incidents or uh, experience of other people my father was determined that he wasn't gonna let that those those words yes uh discourage him for uh moving his family to carbondale so he was not reticent oh no no he didn't no, then no. he didn't allow that to hold him back no he didn't and that's what we're talking about today we don't want you to be reticent no and holding yourself back because of unknown anxiety or because of fear, things you may have seen on the news mm -hmm. or something that happened to somebody else. You don't know what their situation, you don't know what their circumstance was. So don't be reticent and hold yourself back from your blessings no. that God has for you. God has given you special abilities. That's what God has given you, a spirit to be able to go and do things in life and to be pro productive and to be proactive and to be pro-social and to engage in society in a very positive uh, a way. And so, and you have to have skills, you have to have knowledge, you have to have wisdom to be able to operate on the level that God has for you. So if you need to go to school, if you need to go to college, if you need to get up here to Fayetteville State University, go ahead and enroll in Fayetteville yes. State University and get your degree. If you need to go to a and or you need to go to North Carolina Central, if you need to go to professional school, you need to go in the law school, you need to go to medical school, you need to go to chiropractic school, whatever school you need to go to. If you need to be, if you want to work on cars, you need to go train the auto mechanic. Mm -hmm. If you want to work on air conditioning, you need to train the HVAC. If you want to, if you want to do whatever it is you want to do, if you want to work in, uh, on on pipes and water lines, mm -hmm. you got to go train and plumb. So go train and get educated in something. Don't hold back. Get out of the house. And get off the porch. Get out on, out of the yard. Get out there and become what God has for you to become. Go ahead, sister. And I'm just uh, gonna add on to that, Dr. Kemp. Yeah. Uh, I was I picked up the newspaper yesterday, and at the heading on Come the on. heading oh, of it, Lord. it talked about this. Let me go city get that. Of talk, I'll talk to him while I'm going. And get it. it talked about the newspaper, this Fayetteville Observer, Woo! being the oldest. Newspaper, tell yeah. me about it. Yeah, there it is. It says, the Fayetteville Observer. Uh-huh. North Carolina's oldest newspaper established in 1816. Uh-huh. And then as we moved our, our eyes further down to the next Ooh, heading, look it at says, this. City Tops and Black Owned Businesses. Look at that. Okay, look. Dr. Kemp, you take it from there. Well, you know, I read the article. I read this article and it's and and it talks about the, the, there's a, a a a groups there are groups that help people to establish businesses uh, uh, women and 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 black people to establish businesses here in favor it's a great support system but one of the things that just excited me so much about this as I read this article was that when you look at when they looked at Richmond Virginia okay. Fayetteville had more black-owned business than Richmond, Virginia. They looked at Washington, D.C. Fayetteville had more black-owned businesses than Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And you know they even included Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. And they said that black folk here in Fayetteville had more black-owned businesses than black people in Atlanta. In other words, Fayetteville. This city of Fayetteville, where yes. we live, yes. 